everybody for taking the time and interest to join us today. And hopefully it'll be a, a pretty enlightening uh, discussion today about 10 gig opportunities, especially we're talking about the XGS Pond. So XGS Pond, we're interfacing with a fast connection and actually bringing that in to our subscribers. So why a 10 gig broadband? Well, obviously there's a lot of enhancements and features that really can uh, showcase your, your, your services going forward. I mean, we see a lot of increase for higher demand, especially in this new reality, the improvements on capacity, because there's gonna be a lot more connected devices, whether they're traditionally wired or going wireless. Also expanding your service offering to offer more tiers. Really good benefits for your, the residential and business applications. There's a lot of media streaming going on and work at home as well as playing games. And it's really an ideal technology that can be paired with wireless solutions. So obviously 10 gig, it's 10 times faster than what we're currently used to right now with a one gig type of pond network. Big benefit is the symmetrical bandwidth. You have up and downstream speeds that are the same, which really is advantageous for those applications. Along with that is the lower latency. It's really important when you make that, that click that button from your location and goes out to the world wide web and then comes back in, you wanna have a really quick response. The ability of rely, reliance on its technology and an uptime as well as providing a secured connection and the ability to be scalable and move to this newer technology from what you have in place already. So with video demands are definitely one of the key trends here with higher bandwidth applications. You know, about 70% of all internet traffic is going through video. So even us right now with this uh, webinar we're doing, there's video included with this, you know, what we're seeing and also all the games and the over the top content that's going forward. As well as an increased amount of connected devices. You know, we see this household had in 2016, kind of an average of about 10 connected devices. And that number is gonna uh, triple, even quadruple. In 2020, we're seeing some devices and we, we've seen this even with our own people, you know, more than 50 devices that are connected within the home. Over 28 billion devices globally around the world. So you just take into account this projection for 2022, that's gonna surpass everything we've had from 1984 to 2016. All that internet traffic doesn't even equate to what's gonna take place in 2022 as it comes forward to that. And getting yourself into a lot of traffic is done with video games and multimedia over top not just the, the game console itself playing games, but they're also the ability of media streamers. They do multiple applications at the same time. And with the advent in 2022, we'll see a lot more virtual reality, augmented reality going up about 20 times that we've seen in 2017. So why just stop at a one gig broadband? You know, Maybe you just reached that to plateau or you've been already offering it for some time. But you can have these two kind of technologies work hand in hand and exist each with each other. So if you're looking at a new deployment or you're looking to upgrade an existing deployment with your fiber optics, 10 gig is a, probably a great investment to get into if you haven't thought about it already. You know, there's a, a wide range of electronics to select from as including, you know, that endpoint device that we are looking at, you know, that ONT that helps make this all possible. And then the range of different tiers that you can provide to your subscribers and new opportunities. We see a huge trend in the two gigabit. So going twice the, uh, the, the amount of bandwidth that we have existing. Others like five gig, and then obviously going up to 10 gig, which really meets those demands. And the technologies are kind of outlined with those trends that we were looking at previously here. So Rochelle, let's go to our first polling question here. 
Absolutely. Okay, our first polling question is, what Tangi technology are you most interested in? Tangi, XGS PON, NG PON2, or Tangi EPON? Let's see here. All right. Whoa, look at these numbers. All right. Wow, interesting. Yeah, XGS PON seems to be the clear leader here. Yep. Oh, closely, a little bit halfway behind uh, active Ethernet. So yeah, very good. Thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate taking that time to give us these results. So let's go ahead and continue on and look at the technology that's behind 10 gig broadband. So XGS PON, that leader that we took in that little polling survey there, yeah, it's 10 gigabits that Capability, the biggest benefit of again is that symmetrical bandwidth over the passive network and that ability to provide that for a, a whole range of applications with that speed that really helps you know enhance that network. So built on this technology and just high level view, we're issuing two topology or two network or technologies here. I'm sorry. The, the traditional GPON that we've seen, and then the XGS PON, which can coexist over your uh, optical distribution network, and then using the wavelengths and the splitters to be able to provide that to different applications. So it makes it really conducive for uh, kind of migrating into this new technology. All about the light, right? Going across and muxing and demuxing that with those. Uh, those points there, those, those colors or lasers that allow us to do this. And we can have two existing technologies running over that same network, whether it's a up around field that you've already been using, or you're looking to deploy a, a new greenfield environment, you know, you can coexist because of the wavelengths are, are different and it's not gonna interfere with each other. So you can have that mix of environment in certain areas that you think are reasonable enough for an XGS PON type of deployment where you have some legacy fields, they can still take advantage of GPON and deploy in those areas. With a little more details into those wavelengths, you can see the differences between the XGS PON, the upstream and the downstream, as opposed to the GPON. Again, those different wavelengths and those nanometers uh, help separate the, the, the conveyance of that technology where we're not seeing that interference and you know it's not interfering with the subscribers uh, connection to their broadband internet. So dividing and conquering, that's what we do. That's one of the key features of the PON technology, especially with XGS PON, we can utilize the splitters to help reduce some of that cost. Active Ethernet is really a great technology and it provides the best bandwidth obviously as well. However, you can't you split that signal off where here we have that ability. In, in so many uh, with the fiber, we have that ability to kind of segment that and change the ratios, whether it's a one to four, but the top typical ones that we see are 16, 32, and in a 64 split. Really, you don't want to go beyond that in some cases, which you can, and we it's been tested in a lab, but it's not very conducive and you probably end up with like really low bandwidth speeds, you know, comparable to maybe even a dial up, which it's not very conducive, right? We wanna have broadband. Why are we proposing this 10 gig broadband solution if we can't really provide those speeds going forward? So extending that reach from your central office, you can utilize a two uh, technology system here for PON in the first segment there from the central office, we see an XGS pond set up, splitting that off to your different lo uh, localized region areas and utilizing pond technology, just G pond, and connecting those smaller regions and being split off from one splitter to another, which really gives you that flexibility to provide more services in your serving area. With those different speed tiers, we see a lot of providers are already engaged in offering you know, higher bandwidths or multiple tiers other than uh, megabits and one gig. We see 
the, the real big trend is the two gig option as well as five gig and 10 gig operator are, are looking at providing those different types of segments, maybe in some niche applications or as we'll see forward, you know, different uh, deployment schemes that really can help benefit their provider or their service providers with uh, their subscribers. So the cost, we, we ask, okay, what is it gonna cost for 10 gig? And these are just some surveys. We, we're taking a look uh, about May in 2019, uh, 10 gig service was about four to 9,000, you know, and kind of a, 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 a maintain a contract. So you sign an agreement and usually gonna be a higher tiered carrier, maybe a tier one, you know, doesn't mean that anybody else could, but it's starting to open up a lot more, especially last year. And we'll see that some of these prices, depending on where you go, we're about in the, the North America where you're, you're looking for this type of technology and broadband access, you know, you'll see the different speeds that are, and costs that are gonna be associated with that. So securing your 10 gig, there's always risk involved with anything that's related to broadband and the internet. With 10 gig security risk, there's always a downstream breach in your network, as well as the ability of reprogramming the ONT device to allow intrusion, as well as once that rogue device is on the network, how do you keep track of it? Because it may look like it's one of your products that you've installed. However, there's a backdoor built into it that's gaining access. To counter that, we employ some countermeasures like the ability of the upstream, downstream and upstream uh, encryption, the higher level of encryption involved to make it more secure, as well as registration, right? We, we see this when we add an ONT to the network and it communicates with the OLT. There's a registration-based authentication you know, that requires it to acknowledge that as well as looking at the OMCI, the security for the mutual exchange between your central office and this remote ONT device to help improve the security for these devices when deployed. So looking at the integration of this new or, or 10 gate technology as well as Wi-Fi. So we really got to equate that experience for the subscriber because all, all they know is Wi-Fi is the internet how that performance is, what it entails, the details, they may not be so keen on what's going on, but they only want to know what's happening within their home network. So that's why it ranks the two together to really provide a great marriage between the two different technologies. The XGS PON, again, the symmetrical bandwidth access, great for single or multi-dwelling type of applications as well as business and helps improve that small uh, home office or remote office with high bandwidth access. Then couple that with the Wi-Fi. With Wi-Fi 6, the latest and greatest addition that we have, it's perfectly matches up with 10 gig access. Fax access beyond one gig. We see this already with the gateways and the routers that have Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6 that provide that high bandwidth. And why not add that to the, the internet connection that goes along with that in that device, as well as the ability to leverage this in different applications to help the, uh, the advent of an entire complex or building to have really high performance access. And then Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi in general is great for the small business applications, whether it's in the office or remote to provide the high-speed access and wireless that goes along with it. So looking at what's in the 10 gig broadband and Wi-Fi 6 to enhance that experience for the subscribers, we see in a single port XGS PON ONT here from the central office, we connect that network. And here the subscriber can either bring their own device or the service providers, they can bring in their device and easily switch out technology without having to take down the entire network. So the subscriber has minimal downtime when they do the exchange of the device, whether it's a service call or in a case where you do a self-install and provide that equipment with the instructions, they can simply just plug in that ethernet cable into the device and be up and running in no time. With the fully integrated 10 gig XGS PON ONT with Wi-Fi 6, that way you can bring that fiber 
more closer into the home in a central location where it provides excellent Wi-Fi. Our Wi-Fi 6 has that ability to add uh, faster bandwidths, more capacity, and then improvements on the latency as well as the addition of saving the battery life on those portable mobile devices that uh, do consume quite a bit of power when they are operating on a Wi-Fi network. In multi-dwelling and, and larger applications, you can split this off. There are small form factor GPON, XGS PON ONTs that can provide the ability of expanding the network and utilizing two different technologies, the XGS PON and then the ethernet technology to be able to expand that out. Here we use example of a, a layer two switch, eight ports and connecting eight gateways together in this example. So this could be a small townhouse, it could be a smaller apartment dwelling that uh, can expand off. And you can utilize this technology to transform that device, that switch device. So in the event that you had maybe 24 ports or uh, 48 ports, you can add this technology. And the XGS pawn is going to provide adequate bandwidth because you know we're getting you know 10 times the amount of bandwidth in to be able to power all these devices going forward. So with that 10 gig broadband in action, we see this advent in a single family or multi-dwelling applications, which really are conducive for providing fiber that's 10 times what we're used to into these homes and apartments. Right now, there's a lot of demos being built by providers and working with real estate to be able to showcase the abilities of a 10 gig. Here's a 10 gig demo home that we see Everything is automated with the latest and greatest Internet of Thing type of devices that can, you know, from thermostats and uh, appliances to the, the, the faucets, as well as all the entertainment devices. And it really shows those potential new home buyers, hey, wow, I can really have a really fast home with all these kind of devices I can add in, you know, utilizing this 10 gig. For the apartments, really great because there's multiple tenants there that can really benefit off this connection, bringing 10 gig all the way to the home, to the, the building and up those risers there. So single small form factor XGS Pono and T's are available and great for these types of conducive for these applications. Uh, all that media streaming, the normal, you know, in-home applications, your IOT can be provided even with voice services. Easy deployment. So in a bridge operation, which is conducive, it makes it easy for a two box type of solution. And again, we can kind of swap out that endpoint gateway, that router, once that Wi-Fi starts to change. It seems like every you know three to six months, we see some new advent in the home wireless. And why not be able to swap that out quickly and still maintain the network? Because the OMT, whether it's a PON or an, we're talking about XGS PON here, you know, that's not really going to change out that rapidly. And a simple connection of an Ethernet cable, Cat5e or higher, from the ONT LAN to the router's WAN port, the internet port, and you make that connection. You can forego the complexity of a double NAT. So we always run into this when we have a router, routed device or router to router. You know, we got to make changes in the device to be able to allow the two to talk. No longer is the case. In a bridge mode, it makes it very simple. The goal here is to have less time for your install team to be on the ground with the subscriber with a simple setup. That way it uh, gets them off to their next job and it helps with your bottom line. In some cases, some providers forego the whole gateway itself and say, hey, we really don't need it because we can use the ONT and not have to bolt it outside, which has another cost associated with it. We can go in the home, but not so far into the home. We can go into like the garage or the basement in a smart panel, which is a small conducive design there, and then offload that just to a Wi-Fi extender. Now with Wi-Fi 6, we have the ability of all those new enhancements, but without having to have a full router. Here, you can use your mesh network to provide all that connectivity. All that that subscriber is gonna care about is how good the internet connection is. They don't know all the inner 
workings of the equipment and electronics that are built throughout the whole network. All they know is they have that little white box that's going to be on the, the counter or on the TV stand, and they're getting their internet access just like they would any conventional wired connection. The ability of segmenting it out and having multiple applications with the gateway device. Here we see an example of what we call a dual personality network. So there's actually two networks on the local LAN and utilizing 10 gig to be able to connect those two together and provide additional applications within the home on a wired network. The traditional yellow connections for your one gig devices, those are still gonna be pretty relatively available for some time going forward. So why not be able to utilize those ports with four ports to interconnect those. But then we use the addition of the 10 gig LAN port. That 10 gig can be used for high performance applications to really enhance the network and take advantage of that internet connection that's 10 gigs and then bring that all the way through into the home with a wired 10 gig solution. So from the XGS spawn gateway on that 10 gig connection, we employ a 10 gig switch and there we add those other applications like video surveillance. So no longer you need to go out to the cloud, really the store, you can do that locally on the DVR and have higher resolution on the video because you're operating at a higher bandwidth with a 10 gig connection. Then for in our new reality, we have a lot of remote workers, those who work with graphics like creating video or music or even uh, architecture, they will deal primarily in very large files. So having that bottleneck of a one gig and then transitioning over to a 10 gig may not be as conducive. So having a full 10 gig from that end device all the way on your local LAN network that's 10 gig and then out through the fabric of the gateway which interconnects and bridges to that XGS bond network so they can have really fast communication. While working at home, it's very important to be able to have that same experience that we used to have in the office, those of us who are remote, now at home. But however, there are a lot of things going on within our home, right? We have other loved ones in our home and they want to use bandwidth as well. They don't want to have to say, oh, well, dad said wait because, uh, you know, he has a meeting so you can't use the internet right now to play your game. You want to be able to play games, you want to watch television on your streaming device, as well as do work, do video, uh, you know, conference calls at the same time and not have those interruptions or uh, latency that goes on. So it's well suited, you know, 10 gig and XGS Pond for uh, video meetings, webinars that we're on right now as well. And the home can take advantage of the Wi-Fi as well as that a wired 10 gig network. And ability with ONTs, the XGS Fund ONTs, they have built-in voice services. So you can provide voice services. You can have one line for the home and then another phone line just for business. Then we look at the small business that also can take advantage of this as well. And the ability of providing 10 gig connection and interconnecting that with the infrastructure within that small office. You have that ability of the symmetrical bandwidth, which is the lower latency is gonna be huge for that office when all the workers, not just one, you times the time, five, 10 or more workers in the office all utilizing that 10 gig bandwidth, which is gonna be great for those cloud services like unified communications, virtualization, storage, and that upload time that's really applicable to make sure that they can run the daily business without any issues. Also, an alternative for 10 gig broadband is the backhaul. You know, we have backhaul that's going interconnecting between site to site or building to building, but why not, why not have that ability with fixed wireless access and utilizing that instead of a one gig connection, a 10 gig to those cell sites, and providing that high speed backhaul. That way you can ensure excellent bandwidth for your mobile devices once they connect through their cellular mobile network and ensure that cohesive connection all the way through you through, through your subscribers, through your network and out to the internet. So interoperability has been a huge challenge for us in our industry. And how do we address that? So in the past, we know it's always been a landlocked system where there's no real room for expansion. 
can't bring in another vendor. If you do, it's very difficult because that one primary vendor for your access equipment is not really friendly to that in some cases. And there's no room to grow with the software, right? If there's new innovations from another vendor outside that, that closed circle, you'll never be a part of that and take advantage of that. It's always been a one size fit all. Imagine that uh, baseball cap that's fit, uh, that you have to undo the snaps, right? And then make it sure it fits on your head. Why not have, get that premium cap that's out there that fits your head exactly the way it feels comfortable like a glove. That's what you really want. Also, with the network management, there's also a likelihood of a swivel chair environment. Even though they try to enclose and hook you in with certain features, you really don't have that ability to have one all-in-all -all system. So the likelihood of swivel chair management going between interface and interface is still going to be the same, even though we employ industry standards. So we take into cue what's going on in other markets, especially in Europe. Europe has unbundled their PON and XGS PON and 10 gig solutions to allow the expandability of that provider's network with different components of their choosing, which makes it really an ideal situation here. Depending on the size of your company and what you're trying to do, you know, sometimes there may not be a full fit in that closed ecosystem. So the ability to select your OLT of choice, then the ONT of your choice, whether it's outside plant, fully integrated gateway, a single port or small form factor, and then tie that together with the management operating system that helps control and manage all these devices and maintains your connection to your subscriber and utilizing industry standards OMCI to G.998. All right, so now we'll take a look at some of the products that are out there and different form factors we kind of outlined. The single port, that's the PMG 7516. This is a single port XGS PON ONT, which gives that ability, again, talking about swapping out the technologies, right? So if you have Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5 in your network and you want to migrate to a Wi-Fi 6, you can do that and not take the whole network down because you're simply just swapping out that residential router, that last endpoint. The XGS PON, the PM7516 has a single SC APC connector built into the tray down there, as well as a, a full 10 gig LAN port. That means that there's no bottleneck there between that technology. So you can take the full benefit of the XGS PON all the way to your subscribers. And in the event that you do want to offer some voice services, the ability of an XFS port helps provide that with a battery backup option and the support of the OMCI with the G.998, 988, sorry. So the front panel, simple LEDs on the front that you can look at the power LED, UPS LED, the pawn LED, and then the phone LED when engaged. You remove the fiber tray and as you can see the bottom there in the middle is the SCAPC connector. There's a release button and you feed the cable in there so you can wound it up in the tray. Also with the LAN access, again, 10 gig LAN. So you have no bottleneck there and you can interconnect it with a multi gig gateway or if you have a network with a 10 gig LAN switch, you can interconnect that as well. Voice services are also available. We have the ability of a battery backup on the PM7516 with the Molex connectors that can connect and provide those lifeline services if required. And the VoIP connections are simply connect a handset there. We need the codex for the G711 and G726 as well as G722 on the SIP protocol. For the fully integrated XGS PON ONT, we have the PX7511. Again, with the SCAPC connector built into the bottom tray, Wi-Fi 6 enabled with AX6000. That means up to eight radios are employed in this device. It provides excellent bandwidth, four on the five gig and four on the 2.4 with the AX specification, as well as that 10 gig LAN port and the additional one gig for LAN ports. 
two FXS ports are utilized here to provide voice services with the battery backup option. And we do support broadband forum spec TR69 and 181 to provide the manageability of the home network as well as the G.998 for the home CI on the fiber. Front panel, you can see left to right, the WPS LED, the PON LED, the power LED, the UPS LED, when that backup is connected. We also have on the right side, the internet LED, the 2.4 gigahertz LED, the five gigahertz LED, the phone, once the phone is connected, as well as the fiber optics connector in the bottom of the tray for winding up the cable. The back panel, left to right, the power adapter port. We have the battery backup connector, the Molex connector. The phone lines one and two ports, the RJ11, as well as the fiber optics cable. So we have an option where you can run the cable in the front or in the back of the device, as well as the right side for the reset button. We also the ethernet LAN, the 10 gig LAN port, as well as the USB port. So accessing the fiber tray, it's at the bottom. You use a screwdriver and you can remove those screws and wound the cable up to connect that SC APC connector into the device. On the back panel for the phone ports, we have two FXS ports. Again, we talked about that. Separate lines, phone one, phone two can be utilized. And if required, you do have the option for a battery backup with the Molex connector. So you can have uh, voice services in the event of a power outage. The user interface has been updated. As you've seen, if some of you have already been testing our products, we have a new interface with the snap-in tiles that give you the ability to kind of customize your device and customize the layout. All the pertinent information is laid out here. We get information about the wired and wireless devices and what frequency band they're on, as well as the uptime, the current firmware version, as well as quick settings to the wireless, the guest networking, and then the network settings. This can be customized and you can change the tiles to arrange them in different order, as well as the ability of customizing it even further by changing the theme. You can change the colors if you like. Also, the menus are very intuitive and easy to access, give you the options to set the, the settings that you desire for your subscribers. Along with that is a responsive web interface. It's much faster now. We use high performance processors to be able to, to provide the display here. And no longer do you have to pinch or move the screen to view on maybe a tablet or a smartphone device. Our responsive view is gonna to conform to that screen size. It detects what size it is and displays it properly. So that way you can type in the text, you can you know, scroll down and see all the settings that are legible instead of squinting or having to pinch and move. And it works with different operating systems of those devices. So. Uh, doesn't really require a specific operating system to do that. Then taking a look at the smaller form factor, something that can really transform the way we provide PON and especially XGS PON. This is the PM7010. And this is an SFP plus, which means it has the ability of data rates up to 10 gigs. So very conducive and matching up with what we're offering with XGS PON. It has a single APC connector built into it in a grid operation, so you can help transform your devices. And we support the multi-source agreement. And what this is, is a standard that's kind of built with all hardware vendors that will interop. So we, if we use a transceiver, we can put it in just about any switch or any device that has an SFP cage, and it's gonna interoperate without any special requirements, any extra hardware adjustments or software required. And fully supported by the OMCI G.988 for uh, your management of from your ONT into this device. So very conducive for the symmetric bandwidth and the ability to maintain and manage your subscribers environment. So the ability to transform these devices. So utilizing simple media converter that allows you to plug in the transceiver and then ethernet out to your device Gateways or routers that support an SFP cage can be transformed into an ONT and still have the ability of their inherent features to provide connectivity for that subscriber. And then again, as we talked earlier, any web smart or layer two switch and any port density can be transformed into an ONT. So this is really good for 
maybe an office environment or those multi-dwelling apartments that can utilize an ethernet connection up those risers and ability to split up all those gateways and having a variety of different gateways and still be able to receive that, uh, the ability of the 10 gigabits with the XGS pawn in that transceiver format. Works with any of these gateways. So anything with ethernet really works, but obviously if you wanna have an XGS pawn with a Zizel product, you really kind of want to say, hey, why don't I go further and go with Zizel as well as the, the gateway. So our series of Wi-Fi 6 gateways that allow us to have this option, which is the EX5510 and the EX3510, as well as existing Wi-Fi 5 devices, where we have our top selling EMG6726 and even VDSL. You're saying, how do you heck do you get VDSL to connect over PON? Well, it's very simple. Each of our VDSL gateways support a LAN to WAN option. So you can convert one of the LAN ports into the WAN port, which we have a dedicated port on this device. And it allows you to expand that out. So even if you have a transition period where you have VDSL2 and you say, oh, you know what? We're gonna build out this new area with PON. I can transition this product over and have the customer just simply unplug one cable and plug in another. So from the copper transition to ethernet and we're ready to go. Okay, so Rochelle, let's go ahead and bring up our next, our, our final uh, polling question here. Of course. All right, for our number two poll, where do you see your organization with 10G in the next one to three years? Very likely in one year, the next two years, possibly in three years, or no plans for any 10G in the near future? Okay, let's see. Okay. okay, very likely in one year, Patrick. All right, maybe in two years. Good, very good, excellent to see. I'm glad we see this interest, all right. Thanks everyone, you really appreciate participating in that. Let's go ahead and continue. So now we come to our Q&A session. Okay. Let's see what's out there. All right, for the first question, Patrick, does the integrated 10G ONT with Wi-Fi support open mesh? Second question. All I'm right. Following well, up that question, sorry. Any no, no, go ahead. You can share on the recent open mesh announcement. That's a great question. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that's a, there, we do have plans for integrating open mesh into our products. Uh, right now, we just had an announcement, as you may have heard with, uh, to integrate the OpenSync into our products. So we are definitely working towards promoting that and adding that into our, our, our product line. So for currently, uh, we are looking at the, the Ethernet gateways to start that off, but there is definitely, we have a roadmap that will probably definitely include our XGS PON ONTs going forward with Wi-Fi 6 and OpenSync support. Great question, thank you. Sure, second question, can the LAN ports be managed? Such as can the 10 gig LAN port be turned off to service if sold as a premium service? Wow, that's a great application. And yeah, there is a way probably within the device itself. It's not physically in the device or in its current firmware state where you can disable or enable a port. However, uh, that probably will be able to be done through an auto configuration server, ACS system, to be able to shut that particular service off. We can limit those ports too as well, you know, through the interface grouping uh, where we can reduce its performance. So that way, maybe you want to unlock it for a premium service reserved for future use if the subscriber decides, hey, I want to use that. Uh, that's an excellent application. And if it's not available, it's something that we can definitely look at as far as integrating to the next firmware release. Awesome. All right, next question. Can the 10 g pawn gateway be managed via tier 069? Yeah, most definitely. So especially with the uh, uh, 
integrated gateway with Wi-Fi, you're going to have that ability to do that because we know that we're going to live in a two uh, management uh, uh, swivel chair world where you have our XGS pond with the OMCI as one interface that we'll be managing, but then we'll have to swap out and go into the TR69 to be able to manage the home networking portion. And possibly, you know, like that question of enabling or disabling a port, you know, that's where that's going to take place. So we'll definitely see that. If it's a pure router with no Wi-Fi, say like the single port or the small form factor SFP, then we will have to put that into like a bridge type of mode. That way, uh, uh, I'm sorry, from a bridge mode into a routed mode. That way you can have the ability of managing the TR69. So that's also an excellent question. Oh, we got a hand raised up somewhere. <laughs> okay, um, next question, Patrick. This is, I'm sorry, this is actually not a question, it's a comment. I feel like if we put a lot of 10G services out there, we would quickly overwhelm the equip equipment in the office. What's your take on this, Patrick? Yeah, that could be the case in some cases, but in the office, it just depends. Right now in this new reality, I think it's depending on the size of the office and how much is going through, you know, we have lighter staff, you know, there's only essential workers in there. So may not have that issue going uh, right now, but coming maybe six months or a year, if we start opening up stuff, then we could see that advent. And that's where, you know, we said, wow, 10 gig is doing great, but what's the next step? How are we gonna alleviate that? So there might be some uh, in the network itself to kind of manage that, uh, how much bandwidth people get. Maybe certain groups, maybe working in the operations type environment where they're, you know, in, in the warehouse type of environment, building things, you know, they may need less bandwidth. So they can probably only, you can set them up as like 100 megs, where somebody who's, you know, graphic artist or doing something that's really intensive files, they could have it, you know, more open in that environment. So yeah, that's definitely, uh, something that we are thinking about in the back of our head as we go forward with 10 gig. Okay. All right, excellent. Okay, um, next up, what is the OLT compat compatibility? I'm sorry, compatibility. That's all. <laughs> Do no they problem. Work with AdTrend slash UBI? That's a great question. So yes, we are doing interop with we call them, uh, you know, some of these other OLT vendors since we, we don't offer the OLT. But yeah, we have done work with them. Uh, specific units, you know, that what something that we can have a discussion, you know, a little bit closer if that's more applicable for you. But just think of the major players that, uh, that are out there, you know, and you know, purple, aqua, white, blue, whoever they are. Now, not mentioning names and to offend anybody, but uh, yeah, we are have an interop program. And again, just to allow that openness for providers to be able to expand their business and not be tied to a, a closed ecosystem. Following that question, Patrick, um, mm -hmm. from uh, the same person, what management would work if OLT is from Adtran? Yeah, so that one they're gonna we're gonna use theirs, but we're using again the Zizol equipment. It's all based on the industry specs, ITU G.988. So any of if they're if Atran is following those uh, parameters, there's should be any issue with you know having the device register, you know acknowledging if there's any uh, alerts, they will send it back. That's shouldn't have any issues. Now, if there's any customized proprietary items that they put into their system to manage, that is something that does take some uh, interop to work on. That way it works in their system. But overall, standards based, no problems whatsoever. Excellent. Okay. We still have time for a couple of questions, right? Sure. Yeah. Let's All go right. right ahead. Have you tested interop with Adtran Pawn? Wow, there's a lot of ad trend. So uh, we do work with ad trend. We have a program in place. We have uh, uh, spent quite a bit of time interfacing with them as well as their products because we know that there's quite a bit out there. And these uh, XGS Pond ONTs are no exception. 
so again, specifically what models, what the, you know, if it's, you know, what uh, variety of uh, OLTs, you know, we can, we can have a, you know, a more detailed discussion, you know, including our sales team to be able to talk about that. But it is under the way, definitely. Wonderful. All right. Is there a list of XGS OLT vendors with whom the ONT is interrupt? Add trend? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's a great question. You no, know, you know, that's something that's very legitimate. Not only the customers, but our sales team always asks for that information. So, you know, it's something that we should, you know, put forth uh, going forward. That way, uh, when those do come up, we can refer to a list. Um, but uh, yeah, great question. So currently right now, no exclusive list. I'm sorry about any interop at this point. And another one, what about uh, Calix? We have both Advent and Calix GPON deployments currently. Yes, certainly. So Advent and arms are Calix as well, the purple box guys. Uh, I would say kind of spurred us into looking at opening up and providing our products. You know, we really weren't in that space and we, you know, kind of worked with everybody. But now that we have it, yeah, we definitely tested against Calix and it's working quite well from what I hear. What specific models, you know, again, that's something that, you know, we should work on to provide some sort of listing for you. You know, also, you know, check with them as well. They, I know they have their service bulletins that they put out. So they will more likely have some information, you know, de uh, detailing that. Okay, um, I guess we have um, one more question. Sure. Is Sizel going to offer a cloud managed program for your ONTs like your competitors? Yeah, that's a great question, right? So, you know, if you know Sizel, we've always been really you know, looking at the hardware and specifically that last 2000 feet and, and gateways and routers and modems and all that good stuff. But it's been opening up, you know, there's, there seems to be a need you know, to provide some more flexibility and alternatives for our customers, the, the providers. And, you know, we kind of made some transitions, you know, we jumped into mobile apps, right? If you know our products. We also on different product lines, like the fixed wireless access, we've done, you know, suites for managing those devices. And again, these, a lot of these things will work in concert with uh, traditional auto configurations or ACS TR69 system. So currently right now, no definite plans. I mean, just keep track and, and, and keep up with us and see what develops. But uh, yeah, it's an excellent question. Great, so um, do we have time to announce the winner? Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that, Rochelle. All right, drum roll. Okay, congratulations to Jesse Jones, the winner of Amazon Fire TV Cube. Wow, nice, excellent, congratulations. Right. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at some available resources as we wind up here. If, if you if you ever seen, we have updated our website. So there's two segments if you don't know already from Zizel. One's a business solutions where you sign see the uh, enterprise Wi-Fi switches and firewalls, but also the provider side is where we reside. And when you go to our website, you'll see this landing page. You want to select service providers. And then from there, you can get all that information pertaining to what you're looking for, whether it's the Wi-Fi gateways or the routers and the, the pond solutions that we just talked about. You'll have all the detailed information, uh, product images, the specifications, and then you can download, you know, the, the product data sheets with the specifications, the quick install guides, and then the user's guides are also available. If you're part of the Zizel family, then you can join our support team and log into your instance here to get the latest firmwares and documentation for your products. You simply go and register, and once approved, you'll be able to access this at any time, day or night. And here you'll have all the latest firmwares that are available, as well as documentation, how to set it up, users type guides. 
as well. And you can make notifications. So anytime a new general availability firmware is released, you'll get that notification automatically in your email box and you'll know, okay, I can go up there, download it and do some testing and see if I wanna add this to our current orders that are coming in. So if you have inquiries, questions, you got an opportunity, please reach out to us. You can contact us at broadband at sizes.com. If you're looking specifically at a sales group in our key account, we have our tier three group. You know those guys if you're uh, talking with them. As well as in our uh, direct sales group, we have uh, Linus Wynn in the e e uh, West, Jennifer Mackey in the East, in the, in the, the King of Canada, Michael Cooper in Canada, as well as Invertible Markets, Francis Shin. You can, if you do through our distribution network of partners here, we have Border States, CSSA, Raybar, KGP, Power and Tell, and Walker and Associates. As well as in Canada, we have our distribution network of Alliance Corp, Raybar, Hall Telecommunications, KGP, Co, and Power and Tell. Also follow us, make sure to follow us up. We're on most of these social platforms. You know, if you wanna uh, connect with me as well or see what's going on with Zizel, please, uh, you know, connect with us and let us know. I'm always putting, posting up updates of events and products and solutions that are coming our way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rochelle and everybody for taking the time and interest to join us on this webinar. Well, hopefully it was good for you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel follow up with us, we're happy to do that. And at the end of the month in February, we'll have a second webinar based on a fixed wireless access solution. So stay tuned for that uh, coming up in your inbox. And that's it. All right, thank you, Patrick. That was a very informative webinar. That wraps up our webinar today. And again, thank, uh, congratulations, Jesse Jones. You'll receive the um, email shortly. And thank you everyone for attending. Have a great weekend. Goodbye, you guys. <laughs>